Hi, my name's Philippa. Welcome to this tutorial about using the pen tool in Illustrator. Today I'm going to be using Adobe Illustrator CS6, but most of the techniques I'm showing you today will work in version CS1 onwards. So if you've heard anything about the pen tool, you probably know two things. One, it's great for things like illustrations, designing lettering and typography, cartoons, creating shapes that you can't create with just your regular old rectangle and ellipse tools. And of course, it's great for logos and stuff like that. The second thing you'll know about the pen tool is that it is difficult to master. It's quite frustrating, especially if you don't know why it's behaving the way it is. In today's tutorial, I'm going to explain why it does what it does and the easiest way to use it. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is turn that layer with the text box off and turn the layer with the sketch off as well. We'll be using the sketch later. So to use the pen tool, you can get it from the toolbox here or you can use the keyboard shortcut P. I'm going to set my pen tool up to use a black stroke and no fill. And I'm just going to check that I'm on a layer with no other artwork on it. The most basic way to use the pen tool is to just um, create straight lines with it. Each time I click, I'm creating an anchor point. Sometimes this is also known as a node, but we'll call it a point. Each point is joined to the previous point by a line segment. And if I go all the way around and click on the first point I made, I get a little circle icon, which will mean it's a closed path. From then, once I've closed that path, when I start clicking again, I'll be working on a new path. When, it, when the path is not closed, like this, that's called an open path. If I wanted to start creating a new path before I'd closed this one up, I'd have to deselect this path first. Ways you can deselect the path, you can choose Select, Deselect, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Shift, Command, A. So I'm going to do that. That will let me keep clicking making a new path. If I want to make a new path up here and I forget to deselect this one, it will not know that I'm making a new path and it will join them together. This is one of the frustrations of people who are learning the pen tool. Okay, so I'm going to delete those. I'm just going to get the black arrow tool, the selection tool. Keyboard shortcut is V. I'm going to select all of that and just delete it off. Go back, get the pen tool. So if you want straight lines but you need to constrain them to 90 degrees, you can do that. Hold shift and you'll get perfect horizontal, perfect vertical or perfect 45 degree angle lines. I'm just holding shift, that's all I'm doing. Illustrator is deciding which angle line to give me based on where my cursor is. So if I hold it roughly horizontal, I'll get a horizontal line. If I hold it roughly 45 degrees, I'll get a 45 degree line. And if I hold it vertical down, I'll get a vertical line. So there we go, I've created a really strange shape, but there's some problems with it. I need to alter it. How do you change it? You can use the white arrow tool, the direct selection tool. The keyboard shortcut is A. Now the, this tool is great for selecting inside stuff. So you can click on things inside groups or inside objects. In this case, we want to select the anchor points inside the object that I've drawn here. So I'm going to use it to select these anchor points and move them. Now I wanted that line to stay perfectly flat and it's as I've moved it it's turned into a slope. I'm just going to use command Z to undo one step and this time as I drag it I'm going to hold down shift as well 
and notice that that constrains the way that I'm dragging this point to perfectly flat. So you can use shift to drag things around and keep them constrained. You can also drag whole line segments. So for instance, here's a line segment. If I use the white arrow tool, I can actually grab that and move it around. Much like a trapeze swing, it will alter the lines on either side of it. So those are some basic ways to change the position of points and the position of lines. Using the pen tool, you can add extra points. So if I want an angle, a triangle up here, I will need a third point at the top of the triangle. I'll add a point using the pen tool. The way I did that, I just got the pen tool from here, moused over a line segment, and you can see when you go over a clear line segment, you get a little plus symbol. If you click, you'll get an extra anchor point. I'm going to get my white arrow tool, grab that point, and drag it up. And I've got my triangular shape there. If I decide that I want to get rid of an anchor point, I can do that as well. Also using the pen tool. Get the pen tool, mouse over an anchor point, and you'll get a minus symbol. Click, and you'll delete that point. Okay, now let's learn how to use the pen tool for drawing curves. I'm going to delete what I've drawn here. Grab the pen tool and look at how to draw curves. So I'm going to start with a single click and then I'm going to move my cursor and then I'm going to click. This time I'm holding the cursor down, holding the mouse button down and I'm dragging. So that's a click and drag. When you do that you get these extra lines appearing and they've each got a dot on the end of it. What these are, these are Bezier curve handles. Now if I let go I get a curve and two handles. So you can think of these handles as the past and the future. This handle here is affecting the line segment we've already drawn, so that's in the past. And we can see that it's the direction of this handle is affecting the way that the tension, the curve of this line is happening here. You can think of this handle as like having a little filament, a little string between the line and the handle. This is what's putting the tension on it. Looking at the handle that is facing forwards, this gives you an indication of what will happen to any line segments that you draw in the future. So any line segments will want to be bent towards this handle. If I place a point here, we will get a curve like this, because the curve wants to go towards the handle. I'm going to go back one step, Command Z. If I place a point here, we'll get a curve like this, because the curve wants to go towards the handle. Undo again. If I place a point really close in, again, you'd think you'd get a nice short line like this, but you won't. You'll get a bent line like this, because it's trying to go towards the handle. That's the basis of how these handles work. I'm going to delete what I've done there. There are a couple of exercises that you can use for strengthening your pen tool technique. Start off with a single click, hold shift, and you get a horizontal line. Now what we're going to do is draw quarter circles. They're going to be put together so that it's going to end up looking like semicircles. Let's draw the first quarter circle. Go up sort of to a 45 degree angle, click and drag, and drag in a horizontal direction to the right. Hold shift to make it perfectly flat. Drag the handle out so that the left handle sits just above that point. So this handle is kind of above that point. Rough enough. Go down to a 45 degree angle back in line with this. Single click and you can see that this forward facing handle has affected the curve of that line segment and then repeat. You can go underneath as well. So this is really a great little technique for strengthening your pen tool technique and getting used to using the keyboard shortcuts. I'm just going to use Command Shift A to deselect that. 
And I'm going to go back and try another of the techniques for practicing the pen tool. So start with a single click and again go down by 40, 45 degrees, click and drag, single click up by 45 degrees, click and drag, back down to the middle, single click, down by 45 degrees, or thereabouts, click and drag, back to the middle, single click, up by about 45 degrees, click and drag, back down to the middle. You'll notice that these green lines are appearing. They are alignment guides, part of the Smart Guides feature of Adobe Illustrator, and if you want those to appear, you can get them by going Command K or Control K to bring up the Preferences panel, and you can turn them on there. So there we go, I have created two test lines using the pen tool. Let's look at using the pen tool to draw something practical. I'm going to delete these and I'm going to go to my layers palette. Now I've got an image in here. This is actually a scan of a sketch I've done of some lettering. And I'm going to look at drawing the S. It's quite a tricky shape to draw, but I'm going to show you a really easy technique for getting that and getting a really nice curve. So what I've done here, how I've arranged my layers, I've got the scan placed on this bottom layer and I've got it locked and I'm going to be drawing on a layer above it. So when you're drawing a shape or tracing over a shape, whether it's a photograph or a single line sketch like this one here is, what you're aiming for is a minimum number of points. We've got several different point types using the pen tool. We've been looking at corner points like this and we've also been looking at curve points like this. You can also have another two different types of point. You can have a mixed curve and corner point so that means that one side will be a curve and one side will be a corner. I'm going to show you how to create one of those now. So here we've got a, an anchor point and it's got curves on both sides. To make it half curve, half corner point, you'd remove one of these handles. To do that, you can use either the white arrow tool, and that's a bit problematic, but it'll get the result you want or you can use the chevron tool. Just use command Z to go back, press P to get the pen tool. To get the chevron tool, I call it the chevron tool, that's not its real name, its real name is the convert anchor point tool. You can get them from over here but that's a lot of work. If you just push alt when you have the pen tool, you can grab a handle and it won't affect the other handle. You don't get that seesaw effect. Press A to get the white arrow tool. So now I've got one curve handle on this side and no handle on that side. So this is half corner, half curve. The fourth type of point you can have is a, it's still a curve point, but the curve is not aligned. So when you've got the white arrow tool like this, and you drag on the handles, you notice that you get that seesaw effect. As long as these two handles are perfectly flat and aligned, you'll get a reasonably smooth curve. When one of them is not aligned, then you get kind of a reflex curve. So to do that, you do need to get the pen tool, use P, then press Alt to get that little chevron tool, the convert anchor point tool, and you can break that seesawness. So you've still got a double curve, but this time they are coming together at a harsh point. So that's the four types of corners that we're working with.